this video, we're going to talk about interactions in multiple linear regression. And in fact, we've already used interactions, this new word for us, uh, in models to help us define what multiple linear regression is. So let me just show you what we've seen already. So say we're going to fit a linear model with the function LM, and we have some y axis response variable, which is a numerical variable. We're going to explain y with, that's my tilde, some factor variable, that is some categorical variable with some number of levels. And then that's asterisk. Let me see if I can draw asterisk a little bit better. Yeah, somewhat better. Um, we're going to, and now I'll use the new word, we're going to interact the factor variable with our numerical explanatory variable x. And we claim that both of these come from some make-believe data frame df. So this is the notation we've seen already for interactions. I just am not positive I used those words for it because I've been trying to uh, keep the you know scary new words away from you until you're comfortable with the idea. So really, this asterisk shift 8 creates interaction terms. And so you know what? I want you to make a note of that in your course notes. So we're going to highlight it. We want you to add interaction terms to your course notes. And so what happens is for each level of f, asterisk, which gives us the interaction terms, gives us a new slope on the numerical explanatory variable x. So if we were to look at this in pictures, we'd essentially have something like this. For the first level of f1, we get that slope. And for the second level of f, let's call it f2, we get that slope. And both of those are across our numerical explanatory variable x in an effort to predict the numerical response variable y. So what we're going to do now is show you that there's more to the idea of interaction terms. You can, in fact, have interactions between two numerical explanatory variables. And that's what we're going to show as an example in R using the data set hospitals. So I'm going to assume that at this point, you all can find the dataset hospitals up on my GitHub repository named data and read it into R. If not, you can just copy that line of code down. So what we've done already is um, dealt with interactions between a factor and a numerical explanatory variable. So if we just create the object fit1 from LM, let's say we're going to predict infection risk using the factor region interacted, that's what that term should mean to us now, with stay. This is a model we looked at earlier. So then we have this model here where we get a new slope for each level of the categorical variable region interacted with the variable stay, which is our numerical explanatory variable. OK, so that's just recapping what we've seen before. But interactions between two numerical variables are created much the same, except that you, as the applied statistician, have to understand that if you want interactions between, let's say, one numerical explanatory variable, nurses, and a second numerical explanatory variable, stay, then this is the same general notation we use. Asterix creates for us these interactions, 
but now we have two numerical explanatory variables instead of one numerical explanatory variable and one factor or categorical explanatory variable. So you see R is happy to do the same thing just right there, but you've got to look at the output a little bit different. So we've got an intercept like we have before. We have a slope on nurses, that is like nurses by itself. We have a slope on stay, but then we get this extra variable in our model, which is essentially the interaction between our two numerical explanatory variables. Now I'm going to write out the model in like pseudo math like we've done before up here, but what I really want to focus on is this negative sign because a lot of people in the world of applied statistics are caught up by this negative sign, thinking that they've found something to say, I, I don't even know how to say what people are confused about. They think there's like this negative slope between this on this interaction term because of this negative sign. But I'm going to show you how to think about interactions between two numerical explanatory variables better than to let this negative sign catch you up. So let's write out the model. So we've got y hat. That is, we're trying to make predictions. That's why I'm putting the hat on the numerical response variable infection risk. And we're going to explain it by an intercept. I'm just going to round it to negative 0.35 plus, now I'm going to pick up the slope on nurses. Again, I'm just going to round it. Oh, rounding's not going to go great here, but you all will get the idea. Nurses plus, then I'll do stay, 0 0.45 times stay, plus, just bear with me here, negative, okay, 0 0.123, let's call it 7, times nurses times stay. So this is how we would write out, as we've seen before, the model associated with this code here. But the way you should think about it is, Imagine nurses is equal to 10. Look what happens when we look at this model with nurses equal to 10. Well, that's like put 10 there, put 10 there. Okay, well, watch what happens. This term is just some number. I don't know what number it is, but sure, we could do it in R because R is just a big calculator for us. And once you stop making typos, Edward, there you go. So we have a new intercept term for when nurses is equal to 10. In fact, it turns out to be negative 0.26. Okay, so the intercept doesn't make a terrible amount of sense when nurses is equal to 10, but it doesn't need to. And now watch this. These two terms look a little bit messy at first. So what I'm going to do is just factor stay out of the equation. Add some parentheses, and look what we have. We now have one line specific to when nurses is equal to 10. We have an intercept, like we just talked about, plus, and now we have a slope on stay. Look, we can imagine that the slope here is now 0.443. Interesting. Okay, let's just deal with that. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing to say about that. That, that. That's what it is. When nurses is equal to 10, there is a new line across the numerical explanatory variable stay. It's got an intercept of this, and it's got a slope of this. Now, that seems to be particularly interesting because this negative sign seems to not necessarily agree with the new slope we found for nurses equal to 10. But you've got to be especially careful with that negative sign because it really depends on what this value of nurses is equal to. Let's down here in code just look at the variable nurses actually goes from 14 to 656. So 10 is like an exceedingly small hospital, a hospital so small, it never in fact showed up in our data set. So instead, maybe something better would be to look at the mean of nurses plugged in. So that would be like 173 here. 
So you take out our equation, which we've already factored nicely, and in place of 10, you can put the mean of nurses. And now we should look at what this slope is going to be. Oh, still positive. Interesting. This negative sign that shows up here is somewhat misleading from what people expect out of a uh, multiple linear regression model with two numerical explanatory variables interacting. A lot of people expect this negative term to kind of dominate. But what I'm trying to show you with this math up here is that, oh, whoops, kind of botched that code right there, didn't I? Hopefully that didn't throw you off. What I'm trying to show you about this tricky negative sign right here is that's not what's really important. The sign of this term in your model, which shows up here, is not the important bit. What the important bit is really depends on what value of nurses, or if you flip the equation around and you want to look at um, for each value of stay, what's the line on nurses look like. What really depends is this part here, because this is the part that defines the new slope across stay for particular values of nurses. So really, if you went, if you look at this piece in particular, if you picked values of nurses big enough, this negative term would eventually swamp out this positive term here, and you would get a negative sign. But for reasonable values of nurses that we saw in our data set, this negative term is not the term of interest. It's this entire term here where you've plugged in a value for how many nurses you want to imagine there are, and then asked what is the new slope across stay. That's how you should consider these interaction terms between two numerical explanatory variables. You really need to kind of think through how the model is going to lay out when you like write it down mathematically and then look at these values. Now, just to really kind of emphasize that what we're doing by defining a model with an interaction term between two numerical variables is really creating a new line for each value that we might imagine nurses to take on. We are creating a new line where there is a new intercept and then a new slope across stay. And if we do that, we see that for some values of nurses, we have a positive slope. And for meaningful values of the number of nurses, that we saw within our data set, like this mean number of nurses captures the average hospital, then we still had positive slopes across stay, even though this had a negative term on the interaction. It's only when, for this specific case, we start to see exceedingly large hospitals, is there a negative effect on stay? So it's almost like and now I'm making this up and I haven't thought it well enough through, it's almost like nurse uh, hospitals that are so big, if they have too many nurses, maybe communication between all the nurses gets more challenging. Or maybe the hospitals see such high volumes of patients that it's a little bit harder to keep everything well organized and running smoothly. So what we're seeing is for each new value of nurses, we have created a model that predicts a different line across the numerical value variable stay. For each imagined number of nurses, we have a new line across the numerical explanatory variable stay. That is what numerical interactions do. For each new value of one of these numerical explanatory variables, we get a new line across the other numerical explanatory variable. So if you're going to add 
something to your course notes about interaction terms, you should add the definition, the idea that this symbol in R gives us interaction terms, and then you should work out some examples like this. And if you don't want to work out this example because I've already done this one, then maybe you should imagine when stay is equal to some value, what do the lines across nurses look like? And you could do a similar sort of thing. You could just ask, what are the common values of stay in our data set? And you could plug those into your model. I think that would be an excellent contribution to your course notes. So hopefully this video helped us understand that we can really, with our multiple linear regression model, we can really build some powerful tools into the way we try to predict numerical response variables.